Hello and welcome to this International Truck Driver Training video. In this video, we intend to give you a basic overview of the vehicle's functionality. This is not a substitute for required DOT inspections. Let's get started. To inspect the engine compartment, with the engine off, release the hood hold down straps on both sides and lift the hood. To inspect the fuel water separator, look through the clear reservoir for water. To drain water, loosen the drain valve. Drain water into a container and dispose appropriately. To check engine oil, twist and remove the engine oil dipstick. The oil level must be within the specified range on the dipstick. Reinstall the dipstick, ensuring it is locked in place. If engine oil level is low, review the operator manual to identify which oil to add. Twist and remove the engine oil fill cap to add engine oil. Reinstall the locking oil fill cap and recheck the oil level. Fill only to the full mark as overfilling may cause engine damage. To check the power steering fluid level, look through the reservoir to ensure the level is within the min-max lines. There are separate lines for cold and hot conditions. If power steering fluid level is low, review the operator manual to identify which fluid to add. Visually inspect belts for cracks or missing rubber. The engine operator manual provides guidance on when to replace belts. If any issues are found, contact your maintenance provider. Visually inspect fan blades for chips or cracks. If any issues are found, contact your maintenance provider. The 2.5 gallon washer bottle is located here. With the engine cold, confirm that the coolant level is between the min-max lines. If coolant is low, review the vehicle operator manual to identify the proper coolant to add. Unscrew the cap and slowly add coolant until the level is between the min-max lines. Tighten the cab. Check the optional air filter minder. When the gauge is red, contact your maintenance provider. Inspect the engine and the ground beneath the vehicle for any fluid leaks. Inspect hoses for cracks or abrasion. Inspect hose clamps to ensure they are tight. If any issues are found, contact your maintenance provider. Gently lower the hood and secure straps on both sides. Now, let's look around the vehicle. To activate all exterior lights for pre-trip inspection, turn the key to the on position. Press the lamp check button. Exterior lights will illuminate, front to back of the vehicle. Walk around the vehicle to ensure all lights are functioning. The lights will turn off automatically or when the brake pedal is pressed. To inspect batteries, lift the battery access panel on the chassis skirt. Battery terminal should be clean and connections should be tight. Green discoloration should not be present. Close the access panel. If any issues are found, contact your maintenance provider. To inspect optional batteries between frame rails, push down on the quick release handles to remove the deck plate. Push down and turn the locking cap and remove the battery box cover. Battery terminal should be clean and connection should be tight. Green discoloration should not be present. Install the battery cover, tighten the locking cap, and reinstall the deck plate. If any issues are found, contact your maintenance provider. Air tank drain lanyards are typically located behind the optional chassis skirts. Open the battery access panel and pull each lanyard to drain the primary and secondary air tanks of water. Close the battery access panel. The fuel tank fill cap is silver and should only be filled with ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. The DEF tank cap is blue and should only be filled with diesel exhaust fluid or DEF. To open the luggage compartment, Insert and turn the key. Remove the key, then lift the door. Gently close the door. A thin layer of lubricant should be present across the face of the fifth wheel. Contact your maintenance provider for more information. To adjust hood mirrors, press gently on the lens to the desired position. Let's get inside your international truck and get ready to hit the road. Typical fire extinguisher locations are adjacent to or behind the driver's seat or under the lower sleeper bunk. Typical safety triangle locations include adjacent to or behind the driver's seat or under the lower sleeper bunk. Optional tow hooks are stowed in the luggage compartment on sleeper cabs and behind the seats on day cabs. To adjust steering wheel position, push the lever firmly downward. Adjust the steering wheel angle and position. Pull the lever firmly upward to lock the position prior to operating the vehicle. 
Press the left or right mirror button to select that mirror to adjust. Press the round button in any of the four directions to adjust that mirror. The use of each rocker switch is explained in the vehicle operator manual. With the headlights on, adjust brightness of the rocker switches by rotating the wheel on the control panel. To blink marker lights, press the marker interrupt switch on the left side of the steering wheel. To blink headlights, press the optional headlight interrupt switch on the right side of the steering wheel. The standard and optional USB 5 amp charging ports will charge your personal electronic devices faster than the optional 1 amp USB in some radios. Only the optional USB in the radio is used to play music from your mobile device. To sync your mobile device to the vehicle's optional Bluetooth, first turn the key to the on position. Press and hold the Bluetooth button on the radio. A connect phone message will appear. Rotate the knob until the add phone is displayed, then press the knob. On your mobile device, turn on Bluetooth. A message will appear to connect with the truck. A pin will appear on the radio. Select that pin on your mobile device. Follow the prompts on your phone to complete the process. To use optional Bluetooth, turn on your mobile device's Bluetooth setting. To place a call with the vehicle parked, dial the number with your mobile device. When receiving a call, you'll hear a ringing sound through the vehicle's speakers. To answer the call, press the button on the right. To increase or decrease volume, press the up and down buttons. To mute your microphone, press the mute button in the middle. To end the call, press the button on the left. To activate the overhead light, press the overhead light rocker switch. To turn on white sleeper lights, press the upper half of the sleeper light rocker switch. Press again to turn off. To turn on red sleeper lights, press the lower half of the sleeper light rocker switch. Press again to turn off. Individual sleeper lights can be activated by pressing the lens or the button adjacent to the light. To access circuit breakers, lift up and remove the access panel. If a circuit needs to be reset, press down on the button on a resettable circuit breaker. When complete, place the access panel and lightly tap the panel back in place. To access the sleeper fuse panel, insert the key into the luggage compartment and open. The fuse panel is located on the left. Pull the tab outward and gently pull the cover off. There is a diagram on the outside showing the fuse locations. Put the cover back on and press until it clicks in place. Close the compartment door. To quickly defrost windows with the engine running, press the max defrost button. All airflow will be directed to the windows at maximum fan speed and maximum temperature. If HVAC controls are adjusted while max defrost is active, airflow, fan speed, and temperature will default to the positions of the respective knobs. Press the mirror defrost button to activate the door mirror defrosters. The defrosters turn off automatically once a certain temperature is reached. Daytime running lights activate when the key is in the on position, the parking brake is released, and both low and high beam headlights are off. To activate low beam headlights manually, turn the switch to the headlight symbol, regardless of key position or ambient lighting. To activate low beam headlights automatically, turn the switch to the automatic headlight symbol. Headlights will turn on automatically when the key is in the on position and it is dark outside. Ensure the ambient light sensor on the dash is not covered. To activate optional fog lights, the key must be in the on position and the low beam headlights must be on. Press the headlight knob in and the light will illuminate indicating fog lights are on. Fog lights turn off when high beam lights are on. To turn on the high beam headlights, pull the lever on the left side of the steering wheel toward you. To keep the lights on without holding, pull further and let go. To turn off the high beams, pull the lever all the way and release. To turn on park lights, turn the knob to the park lights symbol. To activate windshield wipers, rotate the lever forward one, two, three, or four positions to increase intermittent speed. Rotate forward one or two more positions for low and high speed continuous operation. Press the end of the lever toward the column to spray wiper fluid. Rotate the lever toward you to turn off wipers. The optional premium cluster displays all available vehicle data in a single location. Use the pagination button to configure the display, particularly for selecting which gauges are displayed in the center and in the upper corners. 
pop-up messages may appear to alert you to conditions such as low battery voltage. Let's discuss how to operate your international vehicle. Put on your seatbelt and adjust the fit. An optional feature will display a light on the dash and provide an audible alarm if the vehicle is in gear without your seatbelt on. To start the vehicle, insert the key and turn to the key on position. Wait approximately eight seconds for the optional premium cluster to activate and vehicle checks to conclude. A wait to start lamp may illuminate to allow optional cold weather aids to activate. When these are complete, start the engine. To put the vehicle in gear with the engine running, press the brake pedal, then release the parking brakes and trailer brakes. Rotate the stock shifter to the desired position, D for drive, L for low, or R for reverse. To manually shift, move the shifter toward you to upshift and away to downshift. Manual mode is optional and may be limited to certain gears. Automatic mode should be used for optimal fuel economy. Engine brake power is set by pressing the stock shifter down one, two, or three positions to increase engine brake power. The engine brake will activate when service brakes are applied. The optional smart brake level feature is selected by position two on the stock shifter and will act as a speed hold setting. You can improve fuel economy by how you operate your vehicle. When parked, minimize idle time by turning the engine off or by using optional no idle systems such as fuel fired heaters, battery powered HVAC, APU, and auto start stop system. During operation, accelerate gently, operate at lower speeds to reduce aerodynamic drag, and use automatic mode rather than manual mode if your vehicle has a stock shifter. Operate in the highest available gear possible. Anticipate a stop and coast when possible. Avoid harsh starts and stops, which can be tracked by telematics. When passing, change lanes before getting close to a slower moving vehicle to avoid needing to slow and reaccelerate the vehicle when possible. To activate the trailer brakes, pull the optional trailer brake handle. There may be an optional feature to keep the trailer brake applied. To activate cruise control, press the on button. Typically, cruise control will only activate above 35 miles per hour. Press set to set vehicle speed. Press the plus and minus to accelerate and decelerate. If you apply the brake, cruise control will remember the set speed. Press RES to resume your previous speed. Press off to turn off cruise control. Optional programming can allow the engine brake to automatically apply to maintain vehicle speed, regardless of engine brake setting. Cruise control can be used to increase engine speed with the vehicle parked. This can charge batteries or fill air tanks faster as an example. When the parking brake is set and the transmission is in neutral, press the cruise on switch. Press RES to ramp up the engine or cycle through the preset speeds. Press set to ramp down the engine or cycle through the preset speeds. Press off to return to normal low idle speed. Predictive Cruise Control uses an onboard GPS pre-programmed with major roads then adjust vehicle speed for optimal fuel economy. Predictive cruise control is operated the same as traditional cruise control. The vehicle will adjust speed above and below your cruise control set speed up to the maximum allowable deviation programmed by the fleet. It is typical to expect the vehicle to accelerate before a grade, crest the grade at a lower speed, then accelerate above the set speed when going down a grade. The system may apply the engine brake earlier, and or with more power if a grade is steep, long, or for a heavy load. If your vehicle also has adaptive cruise control, the vehicle will favor adaptive cruise control over predictive cruise control. Collision mitigation uses forward-facing radar, and in some cases, an integrated camera to monitor for objects ahead. When following distance between vehicles is deemed inadequate, based on system settings, audible and visual warnings are provided to alert the driver. Service brake application may occur just before a collision is imminent. Maintain a safe following distance at all times. Road speed detection uses a camera in the windshield to monitor most road speed limit signs. On the road, when traveling above 20 miles per hour, the system compares the posted speed limit with the vehicle speed and provides two levels of alert and or intervention to assist the driver. For a level one intervention, 
initially set at plus 5 miles per hour, the system provides an audible and visual warning to the driver, notifying them to slow down. If the vehicle is traveling at 10 miles per hour or more over the speed limit, known as a level 2 intervention, the system provides an audible and visual alert, and then a one second dethrottle of the engine to get the driver's attention. Lane departure uses a camera in the windshield to monitor that your vehicle is within the lane. If the vehicle leaves the lane without activating the turn signal, a pop up screen will appear and an audible alarm will activate. Using the turn signal when changing lanes will prevent the alerts. The optional blind spot detection has radar on the side of the vehicle. The side object display unit uses two LED indicators to display the status of the side radar sensor. The yellow LED indicates the system is active, but no objects are detected. The red LED indicates the system is detecting an object. When the vehicle's turn signal is active and the sensor detects a large metallic object alongside the vehicle, the side sensor display emits an audible warning tone. Passive aftertreatment regeneration occurs during normal operating conditions, when exhaust is hot enough for the aftertreatment system to burn soot. No operator involvement is required. Vehicle operation and performance are not affected during a passive regeneration. Active aftertreatment regeneration occurs periodically when extra fuel is injected to heat the exhaust and burn soot. No operator involvement is required. Vehicle operation and performance are not affected during an active regeneration. A parked regeneration is only required when a light appears. Follow the procedure in the operator manual, which includes pressing the parked regen rocker switch. Engine RPM will increase during the parked regeneration. A precautionary message may appear about the high exhaust temperature. The engine should be left running until the parked regen is complete. Engine derate limits engine output to prevent damage. A message will appear in the cluster. Some potential causes are coolant temperature too high or low def level. D-rate may become more severe if prolonged vehicle operation continues. Contact your maintenance provider for guidance. A warning lamp guide is located under the sun visor. The optional lower bunk restraint secures the occupant while the vehicle is in motion. Two straps are to be worn, one across the chest and one across the legs. The lower half of each restraint should be under the mattress. The upper half of each restraint should be over the occupant. The upper and lower restraints must be clipped together. Adjust the fit for a secure and comfortable fit. An optional seven point webbing restraint on the upper bunk secures the occupant while the vehicle is in motion. Ensure all seven buckles are secure. Adjust the webbing for a snug, comfortable fit. Let's discuss stationary operation of your vehicle. An optional shore power connector under the driver's door is used to provide electricity to the optional oil pan heater, optional block heater, and optional heated fuel water separator while the vehicle is parked and the engine is off. Unplug the cable just before starting the engine. An optional shore power connector under the sleeper is used to provide electricity to the sleeper compartment power outlets while the vehicle is parked. Unplug the cord before moving the vehicle. When sleeping in the sleeper during hot or cold conditions, close the optional thermal curtains on the windshield and in the sleeper. Place thermal curtains on the windows. These help maintain a comfortable sleeper temperature and reduce fuel consumption when heating or cooling the vehicle. The optional auto start stop system monitors battery voltage, engine coolant temperature, and engine oil temperature. When any of these are low, the engine will automatically restart. The engine will run above low idle RPM to charge the batteries and warm the engine, then shut off automatically. This system reduces engine idle time and fuel consumption while delivering confident engine startability. To activate the system, the transmission must be in neutral, the parking brake must be set, the clutch cannot be depressed, the hood must be closed, and ignition must be in the off position. Within 30 seconds of turning off the engine, press the auto start stop button. A light will illuminate indicating the system is active. If the light slowly blinks, one of the safety interlocks has not been set. Your vehicle may be equipped with an optional jump start stud under the hood, behind the cab, or remotely mounted for easier jump starting. Load shedding turns off non-critical electrical circuits to maintain adequate voltage for other systems and for engine starting. A message will appear on the cluster. 
let's step into the sleeper. Many cabinet options are available. Cabinets with doors include a latch. Lift the latch to open. Close the door and gently press on it to latch it closed. To access the optional stowable work surface, press the retractable knob in until it pops out. Pull firmly on the knob to slide out the work surface. To close the work surface, press the tab on the rearward track while lightly pushing the surface in. Push the surface in until it latches closed. Push the knob in to stow it. To open the optional refrigerator, push the lever to the left and pull open the door. Close the door and push the lever to the right to latch the door closed. The refrigerator can remain cold when either sleeper shore power is plugged in or when there is adequate battery voltage and the optional battery disconnect switch is in the on position. Keep the refrigerator on with the door closed or turn it off and open the door when power is not available to avoid mold. The optional TV bracket pivots and swivels for a better viewing angle. To lift the lower bunk, press up on the lever or levers beneath the bunk and lift the bunk. To stow the bunk, press down on the bunk until the latch closes. To open the lower sleeper windows, pull the lever on the bottom of the windows toward you, then upward, and then outward. Reverse this to close the window. Latch the window closed before operating the vehicle. To open the optional upper sleeper windows, rotate the knob counterclockwise. To close, rotate clockwise. Close the windows before operating the vehicle. To operate the optional sleeper heater and optional sleeper AC, it is best to activate these systems when the vehicle is already at the desired temperature. To turn on the optional heater, press and release the heat switch. To turn on the optional AC, press and release the cool switch. A green light will illuminate for either system. Adjust temperature and fan speed with the middle buttons. The display will turn on when you press a button and remain on for approximately 10 seconds. To turn off either system, press and release the heat or cool switch. The green light will turn off. To turn on the optional radio, press the power button, then wait approximately five seconds. Adjust volume with the middle knob. Increase or decrease display brightness with the dim plus and dim minus buttons. Press PSET slash folder to scroll through your preset radio selections. Presets can only be programmed with the main radio in the dashboard. Press band to change between the available bands, including FM1, FM2, AM, optional XM, and WX or weather. Press time slash display button to display the clock. Press and hold this button to be able to change from a 12-hour clock to a 24-hour clock by pressing the plus and minus buttons. Press it again to be able to adjust the hour with the plus and minus buttons. Press the button again to be able to adjust minutes with the plus and minus buttons. This concludes our driver training video. Please consult the applicable operator manuals for your vehicle for more information. Thank you for watching.